Hello, and welcome back to the KEJ Productions channel. My name is Elaine, this is my hubby, Caleb. Today we're gonna to talk about compression on speaking vocals. Should we Why talk were about you <laughs> compression we're gonna talk on a about wedding vocal? For wedding filmmakers. Audio compression. We're gonna talk about compression. Audio compression for your films. Can we just use that? Let's jump in. All right, welcome back. So today we are going to compress a vocal. Uh, the whole point of compress compression, <laughs> the whole point of compression is to take an audio track and decrease its dynamic range so it sits a little bit nicer in your final audio mix. So I'm gonna use the standard compressor that you can find in Final Cut. As you can see, we already have the linear or phase EQ on here. We typically always EQ before we go into compression. If you miss that, we'll link to that video. The first thing I do is I'm gonna switch it over to graph. I just feel like this uh, display gives you quite a bit more information than the general meter that it opens up with. So we're gonna go to graph. Um, then I go over to my ratio. So generally for a speaking vocal, I'm typically gonna set this at four to one, which I'd say that's a pretty temperate <laughs> compressor ratio. I also set my attack time to zero. The reason being is that specifically for a speaking vocal, the minute that their vocal goes over the threshold that I set it at, I want that compressor to engage. I don't want it to wait. So I keep this at zero milliseconds. Same thing with the release time because I don't want it to hold on to that compression, right? I do a swift attack and a swift release. If they were singing, it would be different. Um, then I go over to my knee. When you open up this compression, it opens up with a really soft knee, which is okay. That actually sounds quite natural. I want it to have a little bit more of a bend to it. So let's set it like, you know, point, point 0.6 is good. Comparison, you see how sharp that is. Point 0.6 is nice. If you're a little bit confused as to what each of these parameters are, go to the earlier video where Caleb breaks down the compressor fundamentals and what each of these knobs actually do. You need to know that. And then the next thing I do is I go over to my threshold. Now I'm not just setting this willy nilly, okay? I look at where my natural vocal is peaking. So I'm gonna turn this compressor off. I'm gonna go over to my signal. Okay, so I'm watching this meter here to see where this is peaking. My wife's response was, do you know of another Jessup out there? <laughs> the next thing that crossed my mind. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So he's peaking like right around that minus 10 dB area. I just wanna get those peaks so I decrease the dynamic range, right? So let's go ahead and set this. Let's start like around minus 12. Also, I'm gonna turn off this auto gain. We'll get to that here in a second. My wife's response was, do you know of another Jessup out there? <laughs> so that's not bad. Again, I don't wanna crunch down on this vocal. Like if I have this threshold set too low, watch what it does. Wife's response was, do you know of another Jessup out there? In my opinion, that's too much compression. It sounds unnatural and I don't want to do that. All right, auto gain. So as you see, as we compress that vocal, the whole gain goes down. This gain compensation brings that whole audio signal up to listening level. A lot of people keep this on auto gain and it's okay. I mean, it'll work, but let's listen to what that does. My first reaction upon hearing this news was, Tony's Jessup? <laughs> and my wife's response was, do you know of another Jessup out there? <laughs> so here's my problem with this, especially when you compare it to the original vocal, those laughs are like way too loud, like they just don't make sense in the context of this. <laughs> it's great that you hear them, but what that auto gain does, it's automatically making up for the gain that you lose in the compression. Not only is it bringing up your regular audio, but it's also pulling up your noise floor and it's pulling up things in the background that maybe shouldn't be forward. So I generally try to avoid using auto gain. Because of our graph, I know that my compressor is compressing an average of like three to five dB. So let's just start there. Let's go ahead and make up the gain of five dB and see what it does. My first reaction upon hearing this news was, Tony's Jessup? 
And my wife's response was, do you know of another Jessup out there? <laughs> so right away, that first laugh, do you guys hear how much more natural that is? It's in context, it makes sense. They're not like overtaking, they're not laughing at the same level as the main speaker. So I generally like my speaking vocal tracks to feather around minus six. So I can give this maybe two more dB and it would get me there because we were feathering kind of like around minus eight, seven-ish. Let's see, let's check this. And my wife's response Perfect. was... And that's basically it, guys. Like our vocal is compressed. Obviously, there may be little tweaks here and there as it, it lands in the final mix. Um, but generally, I find that if you compress your vocal to where it's capturing those peaks, you're not doing heavy ratio, um, you're setting your threshold appropriately, and it's feathering around minus six with makeup gain, like generally that's a pretty good start for your, especially once you get into final mix and mastering. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, share it with other fellow filmmakers, wedding filmmakers, and we would love to hear from you. We'll see you guys next time. Compression for- oh, Welcome everyone to my life. Our cat is crying.